feels perfect Other days it just ain't working The good, the bad, the right, the wrong And everything in between Yo, it's crazy, amazing We can turn our heart through the words we say Mountains crumble with every syllable Hope can live or die So speak Welcome to the House of Prayer Live Radio Ministry. You've got Sister Angie here, Evangelist Willie Grizzle, better half. If you would like to call in your prayers, call 270-681-8098. Or you, if, if you'd like, you can call him on his cell, 270-943-8429. Stay tuned and God bless and keep praying. I do, I don't, I will. It's like I'm drowning in the deep Well, it's crazy to imagine Words from my lips as the arms of compassion Mountains crumble with every syllable Hope can live or die So speak life, speak life To the deadest, darkest night Speak life, speak life When the sun won't shine and you don't know why Look into the eyes of the broken hearted Watch them come alive as soon as you speak you say raise your thoughts a little higher use your words to inspire trouble fall like rain when you speak life with the things you say lift your head a little higher spread the love like fire hope will fall like rain when you speak life with the words you say so speak Well, glory, hallelujah, everybody. This is yours truly, the evangelist Willie Grizzle. And guess what? We got a house full of troublemakers in the house today. We have Brother Don back here. We have Brother Tony back here. And we got the old man troublemaker, Bishop Eddie Cheney. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, today, like it's, like the title says, House of Prayer and Friends today. So, uh, I'm, we got, we're going to have some updates, and uh, hopefully we'll have some testimonies today. Praise God. You know, uh, we've been praying for a lot of people today to get, uh, to get uh, their bodies healed. And an uh, <laughs> amazing thing happened today. An old boy that was feeling pretty bad loving last night, he come walking up my stairs. Fifteen stairs he had to climb, but he got there. Amen. Praise God. That's the power of God. See, my friends, you got to stand up and proclaim the word of God, and you got to believe. you got to have the faith. If you don't have the faith, you ain't got nothing. So, my friends, my family, I'm going to turn the house mic on and let everybody just say, praise the Lord, or whatever the Lord leads them to say. Amen. Amen. So, here we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. Praise God. So, since uh, Brother Don's so close to the mic, what you got to say for us today? Oh, that's a lot of mic. It'll pick oh, up. well, I just want to thank the Lord for being here today, brother. And uh, I want to thank the Lord for all the prayers for me last night because I wasn't feeling very well. And I just thank God this morning that uh, I had Brother Eddie pray for me this morning when I went and seen him this morning. And I was driving a little bit down the road a little bit. And I'll tell you what, man, I started feeling better. And I praise God for it. And, just want to tell the people out there, wherever you're at, if you need prayer, just bend down no matter where you're at. 
And that's the good Lord. To put it in his hands, and I'll guarantee you money on one thing, my friend. He'll take care of it. That's right. Yes. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Lord Jesus. And we got a newcomer here. Praise God. We got Brother Tony. How are we doing today, Brother Tony? Doing great. Great, great. Don't be shy. That mic won't bite you. No matter what he says it does, it won't bite you. It won't bite ever once. It won't. But right. once. Once you get the bug, you'll never forget it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So, uh, anybody got anything update on the revival? God is good. Amen. All the time. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we were truly blessed uh, last night. Uh, God moved uh, powerful. Uh, glad to have uh, Evangelist Willie Grizzle there, along with many, many more. Uh, man, uh, Pastor Scotty Davis and uh, his wife Chrissy came out and obeyed the Lord. And God moved. I mean, it was just a powerful demonstration of the anointing of God that swept through that place there with at Sister Sims. That's at 661. Or, huh? 60, 664. 664. Yeah. So we've got the wrong address again? No, it's on there. It's 664. Well, it says 661, I do believe. Yeah. But anyway, uh, just uh, come to the white tent. <laughs> up there with Sister Thelma Sims and uh, okay it is 661 my bad. my bad my bad all right what street is that that is East Willow Street East Willow Street 661 East Willow Street uh, right in their backyard you'll see the big white tent right. just come on out if you're in Scottsville Kentucky or the surrounding area and you can get to us Lord to willing we're gonna be up there tonight at 7 p.m. 7 o'clock come on stop by let go let God have His way. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. But uh, definitely, we've seen people being restored. Uh, we've seen the altar full every night. Somebody's, you know, they're, they're coming to the altar. People are praying, uh, repenting, getting whatever it is they need from who the need giver, and His name is Jesus. You got a need in your life? Huh? We want to introduce you to your help and his name is Jesus Christ yes, well praise God but the revival's going good we, we do know we're going tonight we're taking it night by night we believe we'll be there to Saturday night but now God could change and it could go longer but let God's will be done <laughs> and uh, we want to thank House of Prayer Radio Ministry yes. Evangelist Willie Grizzle for all the help he's done help put the tent up he's, he's helped video and take pictures to document it helping us get the word out there, and as always, uh, letting us feel welcome to come here to his little studio, House of Prayer, here at his yes, ministry, Lord. and just, uh, you know, obey God. So, brother, we thank you from the bottom of our heart. You know the gospel music jukebox. We're always saying we should come together right. as we uplift who? Jesus. Jesus right. Uplift his name, and he will draw all men nigh unto you, my yes. friends. I want to say if my wife and them get to listen in to the archive later, I'd like to say God bless to my lovely wife and family back there in Crossville, Tennessee. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Prophet Tony. He said, I did tell him uh, the name of the program, but I didn't have the thing to leave him the link. But I did tell him about it, so he said he would try to get in here eventually and find it. He does listen in to the Gospel Music Jukebox, so I told him I would, when I get home I'll try to share those links so uh, yeah I'll he, tag it over to your side hey man if he finds us today that'd be great if not we know he will as yeah. soon as he can and uh, guys just keep those prayers coming yes, yes. because man we need you the people of God to continue to pray for us as we be on the battlefield claiming victory <coughs> in the name of Jesus amen right. and we're excited about tonight at least I am I'm ready we're gonna do some old-fashioned singing uh, it's a and and some new age, yeah, new worship music tonight mixed in it. We're just gonna let go and let God have His way. Amen. So God bless if you can come be with us. Amen. 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 Well, uh, you're gonna be mixing the old and new, right? Uh, do, will you need any assistance, like for a PA head, that uh, I can assist you in in any way? That'd probably be good. All right. Well. Well, if you come down there to 661 East Willow Street, praise God, uh, come on down there. We're just going to have one of them old, my old preacher used to say, uh, he says one of them old barn burners. Yeah. Barn burners, amen. We're going to set that old hill on fire, amen. 
Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, let's listen to a testimony from Brother Boyd. Praise God. He is a faithful brother to call in. You know, I don't get many calls. A lot of them, uh, most of the time, want to get, uh, line up with rocks and throw at me. You know, like Brother Stephen in the Bible. He brought the word, and then they... As soon as, yeah. yeah. I got a club right over there. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, you can't get a house full of preachers without having some kind of remarks. Anyway, anyway. hey, I got something for you anyways. Anyway. You know, uh, my little girl bought this. She calls it the preacher shout down. Hey, Amen. What you do here? You know. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Anyways, let's uh, listen. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, you mean? Well, let's listen to this testimony from Brother Boyd. Hello, Brother Willie. I love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd, blinded in Idaho. May the Lord help me do a good job on this call. This one's making the devil mad. I'm trying to call in and talk about being a doer of the word. That's a good question, too. How can we be a doer of the word? What are ways that we can be a doer of the word, not a hearer only? James one twenty two says, but be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. This one's making the devil mad. I've tried a couple times, and I've got static on the line. I repeat the devil away from this testimony line in the name of Jesus. See, the devil does not want us to be doers of the word. He does not want us to do the things that Jesus say, says to do. Because Jesus says many are going to say, Lord, we have done the will of God, and are going to be called workers of iniquity. And the devil doesn't want anybody helping others or loving others or showing the love of Jesus to others and being welcomed into heaven. The devil wants everybody in hell with him. So we've got to be doers of the word. It's very important. When uh, Jesus says, let the dead bury their own dead, you go and proclaim the kingdom of God, we better be out there proclaiming the kingdom of God. When Jesus says to go make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey everything and baptize them, we better be teaching people how to obey what's in the Bible, not just a few scriptures, but everything that's in there. You have to believe in Jesus, like a lot of people know from John 3.16, a lot of people stop at that, but then you also have to repent of sin, and you've got to become a doer of the word and start showing the love of Jesus to other people also. A good way, that's a good way to be a doer of the word. John 13, 34 to 35, the world will know the disciples of Jesus by their love for each other, just by encouraging each other, showing love to each other, helping brothers and sisters in need, helping anyone in need, orphans and widows, those kids on drugs out there, we've shared our testimonies with them, we've seen them turn their hearts and lives over the Lord and get set free from the drugs. That's being a doer of the word, going out and seeking and saving the lost showing love to those people that are living in sin out there and let them know the good news about Jesus. They can repent of their sins, turn their heart and life over to Jesus and be saved, and the Lord will help them repent of their sins. You can see a good example of being a doer of the word in the parable of the sheep and the goats. The sheep are the ones that feed people and clothe people and minister to people and help people in every way they can. And every time they help a brother or sister or someone, it's like they're helping Jesus himself. But the goats are not doers of the word. They don't feed people, clothe people, minister to people, don't do anything for Jesus and the gospel. And in the end, the goats get cast into hell. So it's very important that we're a doer of the word. A great way to be a doer of the word is to share testimonies. Please call one two seven zero six eight one eight zero nine eight. Share your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You can share your testimony with those people on drugs or living in sin, and they can be impacted and turn their hearts and lives over to Jesus and get saved. So we've got to share our testimonies. We've got to be doers of the word. Amen.
fountain Deeper than the deepest sea Stronger than a locomotive Faster than a bullet speed Wiser than a man named Webster Eternally deity Nothing's too big for God No impossibility Nothing's too big for my God Bigger than my God can solve Never has there been a question Baffling the mind of God He has given us the power To rise above our enemies Nothing's too big for God No impossibilities Yeah Nothing's too big for my God Amen. There ain't nothing too big for our God. Amen. But when we're down in the valley, my friends, that God lifts us up. When we're on top of the hill, He's in there to give us high favor. But one thing we got to do, we got to reach out and grab that unchanging hand. Today, we have, like we said, if you just tuned in, hello, Sister Pauline. God bless you, sister, for being in. We got your old man over here. He's fixing to get in trouble, is what he's fixing to get. Yeah, he's got he's got the little uh, preach down horn over here. Praise God, my little girl got me. <laughs> Praise God, and we got Brother Don over here. He's just shaking his head. I don't know him. I don't know. Him. <laughs> and then Tony, he's just taking in watching the scenery. Amen. Praise God. But anyways, today we we just want to give you a little update and get a little uplifting in the Word of God. Praise God. So anybody, anybody got anything on their heart today? I, always. Oh well. Well, open your mouth. Hey, I'll give you the magic chair. Give me that horn. Ah, he's trading. I ain't trading. He's abusing me. Thank he's, you, brother. I, Willie, hey, Willie, Willie, took, Willie took my toy. <laughs> Willie, Willie took my toy. Yeah. I mean, wife, come up here and help me out. They're ganging <laughs> up on me, hey, man. Um, let me say, uh, good to see my wife on here this morning. Where we're at, we don't have internet connection, and. Uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Evangelist Willie Grizzle here at the House of Prayer Radio Ministry to invite us to stop by anytime we're in the area. And it gave me not only an opportunity to tell my wife I love her, but all of you listening, we love you. And we're praying for you. You know, some of you out there today may feel like you're alone. You may feel like nobody cares. You may feel like you're abandoned. You ever felt that feeling of abandonment? Oh, yeah. You know, but listen, you're not. Because God loved you that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just reach up, reach out, take a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I am and hold on, friends. Because now whether you like it or not, or believe it or not, we are in the end days. Yes. It's winding down, the clock is going to strike midnight any time. Are you ready to stand before the King of Kings? And the Lord of Lords. Will you hear him say, as, as Brother Boyd was sharing, will he say, enter in or depart, or depart from me? See, now, if, if you're a hearer only, guess what? You're going to miss the boat. That old ship of Zion, it's selling by. You better be getting aboard because it's getting ready to leave, my friends. And, and if, you, if you're not sure about, well, what uh, church is preaching the truth, 
read the word for yourself. Get into the word of God. Don't take the word of man. Take and the word ask, of God. That's right. And ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart. See, without the spirit of God, you cannot discern spiritual things. So that's why you're confused. That's why you're bouncing around and blowed around like a leaf in the wind. You're unstable because you're not reading. You're not sitting down and eating from the master's table. Right. You're, you're, you're listening to every wind of doctrine, everything being said. Well, see, when you born again, you must be born again or you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So once you're born again, guess what? You rise up a new creature in Christ Jesus. That means, honey, you get a brand new spirit. God takes that old stony heart out, gives you a heart of flesh. He begins to just mold and shape you as he sets you upon the potter's wheel. And, and we just got to let go and let God have his way. That's what this revival is all about. It's about letting go and letting God have his way. And we were blessed last night. There were five different uh, men of God there representing, of course, Jesus and representing their, their denominations. You know, House of Prayer was there. Uh, Watchman Revolution was there. Um, the Little House. The Little House. Uh, that's the name of their church. Uh, the Little Church. Little. The Little Church. They were there uh, uh, with the Bishop. Uh, uh, what is his name? Anybody remember? No, I can't. The little fella? Yeah. Brent Basham. What? Basham. Brent Basham. Basham. Brent Basham. Brent Basham. Yeah. And anyhow, uh, you know, during the service, you know, one of them, you know, oh, Scotty was there, Pastor right. Scotty Davis, his wife, uh, Chrissy, and, and many from the Watchman Revolution, uh, you know, ministry there supporting us, and uh, Sister Thelma Sims and her mama, and boy, we, we was preaching up a storm, and all of a sudden, you know, I heard the words. The Lord said, "Take close the book and take my little book and, and, and go home. I said, that's what I'd do if I was you. I'd close the book and I'd go home. Amen. Obey God. See, instead of worrying about what everybody's going to think about you, because friends, they already think what they want to. Right. If they don't have the Spirit of God to discern spiritual things, then they're going to judge you, put you in a box, and try to keep you there. They're going to say, you're not a man of God, or you're not a woman of God, or that's not of God. But yet they themselves do nothing. Right. They sit at home and complain about everyone that's out and about trying to do something right. to win souls. Whether it be stand on a street corner and preach, go to the nursing home and share your testimony. Whatever it is that God has told you to do, you need to do it today because this could be your last opportunity. Amen. This could be the last day that you get a spend upon this earth because your number, your name could be called up. You're just a heartbeat away from heaven or hell. This could be your last breath. When you really live like that, when you really apply that to your life, then you're a doer of the word. Because if you've read the word and you know to do good and you do it not to you, it is sin. And if you are living your life in sin and you meet death in sin without repentance, guess what? You ain't going to heaven. No sin can enter in. I've heard Evangelist Willie preach it many times. No sin can enter in. To where Jesus is. Do you get this yet? I believe you do. I, you know, I don't have a fireball, as they call it, preaching anointing on me today, but I do have a get her done attitude get her today. Done. Get her you done. say you love God? Well, I say show me God in you. Not by what you say, but what you do. If, if you're given an opportunity today to do something for the kingdom of God, because listen, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, you know, but now if you're worried about how you're going to provide supper, you're not seeking the kingdom of God That's first. Right. If you're worried about how you're going to get that car fixed, you're not seeking the kingdom of God first. If you're worried about how you're going to pay that light bill, that water bill, or that mortgage payment, you're not seeking God first. Amen. Because Amen. the Word of God says if you'll seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. He knows what you and I have need of, friends, before we even ask. And if we will walk in obedience to the Word of God, we've got promises from uh, our precious dear Heavenly Father today that we need to learn how to just receive them. 
It's like it's 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 like here it is. He's saying, "Do this. If you see your brother in need, and you shut up your bowels of compassion. How dwelleth? How dwelleth the love of God in you? And, and if you ain't got love, what does it say over there in First Corinthians? It says you're as a sounding symbol. You're you're you you got nothing. Listen, although I give my body and I give to every need, but if I don't do it in love, I have nothing. I have nothing. It's it's of none effect." But if you do it because you have a love for the community, a love for the people, listen, friends, I don't want my worstest enemy to miss heaven. All the fussing, the arguing, all the debating, all the voting, all the ridicule is not worth missing heaven. No. Today, you may be in a ministry, and your ministry may be... Uh, be uh, the enemy's trying to tear it all apart. Maybe it's trying to trying to kill you, because that's the word. See, he's seeking whom he may devour. And maybe you're about to give up. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you pray your way out of trouble? Why don't you pray and see what God would have you to do? And and if you'll do that, because if you're his sheep, you know his voice. And no other voice will you follow. Now, God may speak through your helpmate, your wife. He may speak through your children. He may speak through your neighbor. Are you listening? That's the question. Are you listening for the voice of God? Are you listening? Are you looking for the opportunity to do something for the kingdom of God? Because, friends, if you're not, and you're so worried about your own personal life, your own personal situation, you cannot add one cubic to your structure by worrying. Worrying will kill you, won't it, Brother Willie? Hey, It'll will. kill you. Sure will. Worrying will absolutely uh, eat at you like a cankerous cancer. It will start with just ever in a little corner of your mind, and the next thing you know, you'll be depressed. You'll be de- be eat up with sadness and sorrow, and there, and, and there ain't but one cure. The doctor ain't got the cure, friends. But I can tell you about a doctor that can do surgery on you and never leave a scar. That's right. His name is Jesus Christ. That's right. When you really apply the Word of God to your life, and you really have sat down and understood that without the revealing, without God Himself revealing Himself in His Word to you, you'd never know Him. Have you been called today? Have you been set aside for such an hour as this? If you're claiming to be born again, then you need to know that people are watching the fruit on your tree. <coughs> the Word of God says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. That's right. You cannot bear good. <coughs> Excuse <you>. me. <coughs> well, you. that air conditioner feeling good, but making me sneeze. Uh, yeah. No, leave it on. <laughs> anyway, anyway, you cannot bear good and bad fruit. Now the Bible says, "Make the tree." See, you got to do something. You got to make a choice. <coughs> yeah. You got to make a choice. When when given the opportunity, somebody does something to you. Maybe they told a lie on you. You can forgive them. You can pray for them. And when given the opportunity, you can bless them. Or you can demand a payment. So if you say you forgive them, but you think that they owe you something because they've wronged you, friends, you've not forgave them. Bottom line, you've not. You've not forgave them. When you forgive somebody, you're taking that debt unto yourself. See, every every wrong demands a payment. Right. Somebody, you or the one that did it, is going to pay. That's right. If somebody knocked over your shade lamp and they broke it and you had $50 in it and you looked at them and said, that's all right, my friend. I, it was an accident. You know, I forgive you. Don't worry about it. Go on about, you know, go on. It's okay. Well, you took that $50 loss, didn't you? Or you could have said, I want my $50 for that lamp you broke. And uh, then you could have said, I, I ain't forgiving them. Do they pay me for that lamp? He borrowed that lamp. The Bible says, turn not a borrower away. The Bible says, if they come to borrow money, you're to give it looking for nothing in return, if you've got it. 
but people will say, I ain't loaning him no more money. He owes me money. He ain't never paid me back. He ain't a man of his word. See, you're demanding a payment. You have not forgiven them for the wrong that they've done. To forgive somebody, look here, when Jesus forgave you, he paid your payment in full. He took it upon himself. That's why right. he went to the cross and laid down his life freely. They never took his life. He gave it for whosoever. That's me. That's you, friend. See, if you really forgive people that's lying on you, putting you down, if you really forgive those that won't help you when they're supposed to or said they would, but they don't, they make up excuses, well, you forgive them. And to forgive them, see, when Jesus forgave you of your sins, Tony, he said if you'd repent and turn from the wickedness, that he would put your sins as far away as the east is to the west. He would put your sins into the, that deep sea of forgetfulness never more to be brought up again. Listen, the devil's playground is yesterday. That's right. Now tomorrow is never going to get here. It's always today. That's why today is the day of salvation. If you've been living in lack, if you've been letting down, if you know you could do more, then why aren't you doing more for the kingdom of God? If you know you can do more for your neighbors, if you know you can do more for those that are in need, but you choose to turn a blind eye as though to say, nothing I can do would make a difference. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because you can pray. Sometimes you can just give them a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes you can just give somebody a ride. And that's worth more than millions of dollars. Sometimes you just show up and say, Hey, I love you. How you doing today? And I love these words. Is there anything I can do for you? Do you need anything? And, you, and, and, and you're laying it on the line because either you are or you aren't. Either you will or you won't. You do or you do not. Love. See, love. Love is the key. Love. We must love one another. If we don't love our brethren who we see, how can we love whom we can't see? That's right. Remember, Brother Boyd earlier was saying, what you do unto the least of mine, the Lord says, you have done unto me. I tell you, there's, we know that there's a darkness that's coming over America, and we know that America must be chastened by the Lord. Because right. if he don't, then he's got to back up and repent for Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. Now I'm telling you, this He'll is real. To destroy heaven if he lies. This this is real. There is there is the gloom and doom. There is, and it's here, and we brought it upon ourselves because us, those of us that know the truth, are sometimes afraid to get out and speak the truth <laughs> because we'll be ridiculed, we'll be made fun of. We may even get arrested. So we, a lot of us, have chose to be silent. But the Word of God says, cry loud and spare not. Friends, we are running out of time. And, and Brother Tony, their, their soul's hanging in the balance. There's people watching us. They're listening to how we talk. They're watching how we live. Because they're wanting the real thing. Amen. They've, they've been fed fed the, the garbage so long they're getting sick on it they're ready for the truth are you my friend ready for the truth today are you ready to say you know what I'm, I want to come out from amongst the world in the worldly ways I want to put and ask God to help my unbelief that I may believe I want to ask God to write His Word upon the tablet of my heart. I want to be a doer of the Word of God, not a hearer only. Friends, it's this simple. Just simply begin to apply the Word of God into your life. As you know, and what you know this day, just start applying it. Be a doer, not a hearer only. If you'll do that, the rest will come into line. If you'll begin to be led by the Spirit as you deny self and pick up your cross and follow after Jesus, He'll make you fishers of men. Amen. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Listen, we've got, we've got to be busy about the Father's business. And I know people work hard to get nice homes and nice furniture and nice cars and nice things. But friends, those nice things are going to burn. Amen. You come in this world naked, you're going out naked. You ain't taking it with you. Not one thing. But I tell you what you can take with you. That's the blood of Christ applied to your life. Because when you meet death, you will hear him say, either enter in or depart from me. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life with the blood of Christ, friends, you'll not see heaven. But if you have made the choice, not by what's going on around you, but what's going on in you. If God's drawing you, and you know inside it's time, don't reject him. Because if you reject Jesus, you're condemned already. If you meet death without Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, friend, you will lift your eyes in hell. The rich man immediately lifted his eyes in hell and begged and begged that the poor beggar Lathers could just dip his finger in water and touch his scorched tongue. Friend, immediately, immediately, I'm telling you, in the moment, a blink, a twinkling of an eye, life as you know it here, not only in America, but around the world, could change for you today. Because today could be your last day. Are you ready? Just stand before the King of Kings. Amen. Bottom line, what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with the truth? If you reject, if you reject, and you turn and walk away, you're condemned already. And don't think that you'll have time to do it later. Because, honey, you don't have the promise of the next breath you are to take. The next heartbeat, you can find yourself in the presence of the Lord. And you will either hear, depart from me or enter in. That's the conversation that's going to take place. You're not going to be able to say, but now Lord, wait. If I'd have had another day, I would have went and seen old Evangelist Willie. If I'd have had another day, I would have went up there and helped old brother Don. If I'd have had another day, I would have, I would have done this or that. You better live this day as though it's your last. So what's important to you? Because people will do things they consider important to them. Right. You know you do. If it's not important to you, you may not think it needs to be done today. So you will shove it to the back of your list. Or you will put it off and say, well, we'll do that later. See, you categorize things that are important to you. The number one thing should be what? What should be the most important thing in our lives? Jesus. That's Jesus. Now Jesus told us to do some things. Listen, friend, if you're claiming to be born again, Jesus ought to be first. Others ought to be second. That puts you down pretty far on the list. My, my personal needs, my personal life, what is that? Do you even have one? A dead man can't have a life. If you have denied yourself, picked up your cross, Jesus is first. Others are second. I'm last. If I do this, I fulfill the whole law. If I love the Lord thy God with all my heart, body, strength, and soul, with every fiber of my mind, with everything I can, and I do unto others, as I would have them to do unto me. Whether they do or not. If I do the right thing. If I do the godly thing. If I apply the word of God in my life. I fulfill the whole law. I won't lie, cheat, con, crook. I won't covet my neighbor. I won't desire what others has got. I'll be content with that which the Lord has given me. And I'll give thanks and praise to him. Because no matter what situation you're in. Somebody's having it a little bit worse. So instead of complaining about everything that's wrong in your life, 
why don't you begin to praise about everything that's right in that's your life? Right. If you confess to know Jesus. Because this joy I'm talking about is unspeakable. This peace that I hold cannot be bought with money. This path that I'm on is narrow. But I got good news for you. I have yet to meet a man that has got lost on a straight road. Just impossible. You just go straight. It's straight and narrow. And if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, if you'll continue to hold on to that unchangeable hand and endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Friend, we're living in some perilous times. This world's getting wicked. I mean, look around you. Babies are being raped and slaughtered and killed. Abortion is running rampant. Homosexuals standing and lesbians standing in the streets of America and around the world claiming that God has called them to preach. And they're licensing them, these denominations. They are now hiring preachers to feed the sheep. They're harlings. They won't die for the sheep. When trouble comes your way, they'll just simply leave. And if the sheep don't like what the harlan is telling them, they'll vote him out and fire him. They don't care that he's in debt and got a home and got youngins raising. They don't care about that. If you don't tickle their ears, Harlan, they're going to fire you. Now, the Word of God be true and every man be a liar. You can try to justify accepting a salary all you want. Sure. There ain't no justification to it. It's wrong. People that want to help men of God, they ought to give from their heart and give expecting nothing back. For God would have us to owe no man anything except to love him. Right. See, because once you sell out to the world, and the world has its hooks in you, this is why you can't serve two masters. You will either love the one and hate the other. But you cannot serve two masters. You cannot love God in manna. You cannot love God and desire money. You cannot love God and desire things of this world. But if you love the things of this world, the love of the Father is not in you, my friend. You are desiring fleshly things in your life, not spiritual. And no, I'm not preaching a poverty religion. Because I am the richest poor man you'll meet on this side of eternity. I've got a joy that's unspeakable, friends. Whew. What I got can't be bought. What I got can't be took away from me. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. You better get your eyes off man, and you better start looking up for your redemption draws nigh, my friend. You better make a choice whom will you serve this day, today, right now, right there where you're at. Will it be Jesus or will it be the world? Will it be Jesus or will it be your family? Will it be Jesus or will it be the bank? Will it be Jesus or the loan company? Whatever, whatever, if you're in debt then you're a slave to that debt. That's right. You don't believe me? You don't believe that? Why do you work double shifts? Why do you work so hard? Because you have got yourself in debt by listening to the lies of the devil. Oh, you got to keep up with the Joneses. You got to have a better home or you're not a man of God. That is a lie. That's a lie. Okay, I strive right? to be Christ-like and he had nowhere to lay his head. Use a stone for a pillow. Right. I'm telling you, this is how real it is. If you cannot obey God because you are indebted to the world, you're not where you need to be with God. Now, if God's giving you a family, He wants you to provide for that family. That's right. You seek Him first, and He'll make a way for that to be done. You seek the kingdom of God first in His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God will put favor on you and people will give you jobs. They'll help you. They'll, they'll help you in life as long as you're seeking the kingdom of God first. He said He'd not have His people, His children begging for bread. Did you know that there's more important things than money? Did you know that 
they are worser things than death. Yeah, to have the wrath to God upon you and your house is a whole lot worse than dying. That's right. Because you're alive with the wrath of God upon you. That would be awful. And many of you listening to these archives, you know what I'm talking about. When a calamity comes your way, without repenting, God said he would laugh at those calamities. People cry out every day, oh God help me. But he turns away because they choose sin. They choose to commit adultery. They choose to lie and con to get their way through this world. They begin to look at how they can get something for nothing. Yeah. They look how they can get from you. Or maybe it's you looking how you can get something from them. But now let me tell you, the Word of God says you're more blessed to give than you are to receive. That's right. And when you really get a hold of that, and you really begin to walk in the anointing of God, not just talking about money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about the Word of God here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not tickling your ears. But right now you're feeling a tingling in your ears. In the book of Samuel, he said that the, the whole of Israel would feel the, tick, the tingle. The tingle as the Word of God be revealed. And if you look over there, you'll find that the, the Philistines at one place, they even know, as they said... This is the gods, plural, gods, that sent the plagues upon the Egyptians in the wilderness. What do you mean gods? These three are one. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Friends, you must be born again. If you continue to play with fire, you're going to get burned. Now, I want to tell you about a fire that will consume you, but won't burn you. And his name is Jesus. So I tell you what do. Do just what the word of God said. In the book of Malachi. He says. Prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts. And see if I will not open you up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. That you have room enough not to receive. If you need a blessing in your life today. You must not be where God told you to be because he said he would bless you that you would not have room enough to receive so if I was you I would begin to check my life and see where I'm falling short and I would repent because God in his word says if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves humble yourself my friend under the mighty hand of God and realize where you're at today now, the blessings I'm talking about, you might not see them all. Amen. But you'll sure enough feel them. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about walking upright before God. If you're where you're supposed to be, you're like that city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. I mean, man, people are looking far off and they're coming to that light because there's nothing but darkness that the world has to offer. And when sin is done with you, my friend, it brings forth death. But we bring good news. There's lights on. Look away over yonder. There's a man of God or a woman of God out on this battlefield that's preaching the truth, proclaiming the gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Just look. Get your eyes off man. Begin to look for that light like a city that cannot be hid. Look for those doers that are applying the word of God to their lives. Get in there and begin to whoo, plant you a garden. You want to break the spirit of poverty off of your life? You find you an anointed man of God and you start feeding him soup, beans, and taters. And you start driving him around. And you start just seeing what you can do to be a blessing. To give is more precious than to receive. You're more blessed to give. Watch what happens. Plant you a garden. Begin to be a doer of the word of God. Help that man or woman of God that's out there on the battlefield and watch what God does. You plant a garden, you'll have a harvest. But if you eat up your seed and you don't sow into the kingdom of God, guess what? You'll have no harvest. 
Once you're done eating, you'll starve to death. And I'm talking about a famine in the land, not for natural food, but for spiritual food. Because just as sure as you don't take care of that man or that woman of God that God has sent into your city or into your home, and you reject the, 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 the message that the messenger is bringing you, he will dust his feet. And it would be better for you than it was when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. It would be for you to bless him than to reject him. You think it was bad when it rained down far and brimstone? You reject that messenger that God sent to you. Honey, you're not only going to fill the fire and the brimstone in hell with everlasting burning, but you're going to be where the worm dieth not, welling and gnashing of teeth. I'm talking about a torment separated from the presence of God for eternity. Now, if you know to do good, and you do it not, to those men and women of God, to the children of God that God has put around you and in your life, You sin. And if you sin, without repentance, there's no way that you're walking in the blessings that God wants you to have. But if you walk up right before Him, He'll withhold no good thing from you, friend. Oh, you might think you need a better car. God knows what you got need of. You might think you need better clothes. Just because you want to keep up with the, the, the fad and the fear fad that's going on throughout your community. That's not true. God knows what you got need of way before you ask. Amen. But if you're seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness with every fiber of your being, guess what? He's going to give you exactly what you need for each task that He sends you to do. For uh, He is the need meter, my friends. You got a need, God's got it. Yes. But now you must choose this day whom will you serve? Whom will you serve? Bottom line. What are you going to do with Jesus? Hey, good to see Sister Shirley in the in the uh, house here at the House of Prayer chat room uh, along with my wife. Uh, I love you guys and uh, just keep those prayers coming for us here in this tent revival and here at the House of Prayer Radio Ministry. Um, Man, I just love the Lord. There's no other way to describe my life. I just love the Lord. And we're looking forward to the next revival. Uh, soon we're going to be back up in the eastern part of Kentucky. We're going to be up there. We're going to stop by and get a visit with Sister Shirley and eat me a bologna sandwich and well, you get me a hug. To Brownsville first, don't yeah, you? yeah, we're going to be up here in Browns, uh, Brownsville. Brownsville. Is that Tennessee or Kentucky? Kentucky. Kentucky. We're going to be up there. Then we're going to be back in... Uh, Lord's willing, Bowling Green. We got doors opening up. We got doors opened up up there. Got to go meet a Baptist preacher up there in uh, um, uh, Prestonsburg, Kentucky. Uh, man, they just a whole lot of things happening. Lord willing, we're going to be back home in between all this and get the gospel music jukebox up and back out. Matter of fact, I may ask Brother Willie if um, if we can come up here tomorrow with my laptop. Uh, uh, before service it'd have to be around 3 3 30 and i may sign in and do a little short radio program well, on I'll the gospel leave, music I'll jukebox leave the door unlocked. where i can um, get get the word uh, get them caught up to speed and everything well, you see our the listeners cable, just plug them and go. for those of you that's been asking how you can help us here at the gospel music jukebox radio program and the project outreach get you a pencil and piece of paper i want to give you our mailing address I want you to write this down. I want you to pray and obey God. We ask for $5 a month. Yeah, it represents the five stones that David picked up. And it's just something between me and the Lord. And the five make one. It makes a whole. And anyway, little David just needed one when he slung it, didn't he? Right. Just needed one to kill that giant. Friends, we're facing giants out here. We're at war. And there's souls hanging in, in the balance. And, and, and we don't get a lot. You know, God sends us to the really poor and um, economically living way, way bad. And that's where we pray to go, to the sick, to those that are lost and undone, and to the crippled, the lame, the blind. And um, 
you know, we do give them an opportunity to give to the work of God, and they are giving. Uh, with some, they're most, some, they're all, some, nothing. But they give their time, their presence, and their prayers. But we want to give you, the listener, an opportunity to help us continue to take revival across America. Five dollars a month. You ready? Write this down. Two nineteen, Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, three eight five seven one. Now, if you're mailing from out of the United States, you just put USA at the end of the zip code. We've been blessed to get letters from Germany and other other foreign lands, and uh, uh, as they sold in and 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 share what God's doing over there. We'd love to hear from you. So once again. 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. I'd ask my wife if she's in the chat room, uh, she may want to put that up, the gospel music jukebox at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. And uh, also pray about sowing into the House of Prayer ministry right here in Scottsville, Kentucky, and the work that they're doing. As uh, not only trying to, you know, get the gospel out on these radio programs, but Evangelist Willie goes just like we do, yeah. sent wherever God sends him, and uh, just keep those prayers coming and obey God. But most importantly, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior right now, right there where you're at, it's decision time. See, it's not by accident you stop by and listen to this archive. No, friends. It's by heavenly divine appointment. Now, what are you going to do with Jesus? If you reject Him, you're condemned already. If you reach out, if you run to Him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, He will in no wise cast you out. He will take you, shape you, and make you what He would have you to be. But you must humble under the mighty hand of God. You must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow after Jesus. Know that we're praying for you. We're praying with you. We love you. We encourage you right now. Get it done. Don't put it off. Because death is just a heartbeat away. Don't reject Jesus, my friends. We love you. I'm going to turn it back over to Evangelist Willie here at the House of Prayer. I hope today that we get to hear Brother Tony share some of his testimony or Amen. Brother Don or whomever. Oh, I, hey, we're overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You want to punch the devil today, friends? You want to call in right here? You Amen. can leave your pre recorded testimony. Yeah. Uh, you can call it in. We'd love to share it right here today. I encourage my wife to call in. She's listening. Sister Shirley, if you can, call in. Help us punch the devil right upside the head. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let's give him two black eyes today. Amen. Amen. Come on, Brother Will. Amen. Uh, brother Don is asked uh, for a moment to speak. Well, my brother, come on up to the magic seat. I want my toy back. You ain't getting it. <laughs> well, Christian brothers and sisters, I just got a little thing to say. Bless you. Sir. Won't take you long. Though. I talked to a friend of mine that's a pastor. He preached the other night. and I never did realize this till he was telling me about it. Uh, how good do you know your neighbors? Well, I know all of mine around me very well. Believe that. But the message is, do you know your neighbors? Do you go over there and see them? Uh, see if they need anything or sit and talk to the elderly. I got a woman that lives caddy corner across the street from me, 95 years old. Her name's Miss Lois Whitlow. And I tell you, I go sit with her and have a cold drink with her, and we just sit and talk. And I talk about the Lord to her. And uh, all of my neighbors around, I talk to, and I try to help everybody I can. That's what the Lord wants me to do. Uh, what I'm trying to say is go out, go to your neighbors, and sit and talk to them sit together a little time to chat with you tell them about the lord uh, go visit people i go visit people in nursing homes up here in scottsville kentucky uh, I, I love them people and what i mean by them people the older people they don't have no one it's sad to go in these places and watch them sit in the hallways their head down and people just go and visit and someone else there and just walk right by them like they're nothing they are something they are the children of god I don't care how old they are. God loves them. We should too. 
and you know it just breaks your heart to see this happening to our people just like brother eddie cheney was saying a while ago get off get off the chair get out in front of the tv go visit someone talk to them about the lord we are at the end of times if you pick up your bible and look at revelations it tells you and i'm going to paraphrase this you gotta give me a minute i had a stroke a few years ago and it takes me a minute to say the things i want to say but uh you can't tell seasons from seasons and you know rumors of war and we all in that right now encourage everybody to go out talk to people uh you know a lot of people don't like me because of my past you know that's fine but i still love them um that's not ever the stroke i thought was going to take me out for good i'm still walking i'll walk on a cane but i'll tell you something everywhere i go i ask people are you smiling yeah i get them to smile and believe that but i'm going to tell you something if you can't get someone to smile and tell them to love god something wrong with you you need to get on your knees I encourage people just to get down on their knees. Right, if you're in front of a bank or in front of a school, it don't matter where you at. Get on your knees and ask God. You know, tell Him what you need. It's not in your time; it's in His time. We need to go out and spread the word instead of sitting. Like Brother Eddie said, time is passing us by and it's going too quick. Please encourage people to go out and do this in the love of God, and just know. You know, just like me and Brother Tony. Brother Tony's had a massive stroke 14 years ago. And I tell you what, this man gets up and goes when no one else wants to. Now, that's the love of God in my brother. Just a few few weeks or three weeks ago, me and my brother was ordained as deacons. And, brother and sisters, let me tell you something. The shape that me and him in, we go and we let people know. We don't sit down. God don't want us to sit down. God wants warriors, and that's what we are. We are. It's not called the mighty warriors of God for nothing. You got to have the full armor on. Yes, we battle a lot of evil things out here every day. But if you got that on, the devil's not going to touch us. Believe that. Now the devil knows he's whooped and knows where he's going at the end of days. So he's going to try to take everybody he can with him to there. Now you know how I know this. Years and years ago, I spent 15 years and one day in prison for murder. thought God left me in a hell hole that I could never crawl out. When I got out a little bit and very little bit after that, my mother died. I lost everything in the world and I started drinking. I was just pure mean and I was evil. Till one day I found the man himself. He told my wife, come get me in a place that no other Christian woman would want to go i guarantee you that she came in in bar in tennessee and got me out told me if i wasn't leaving that day that i was going to die that night and i looked in that woman's eyes and i said lord i love that woman she's beautiful i'm gonna marry her but what i'm trying to tell you god can save you god can do anything there's nothing that he can't do if he can save a man like me and forgive me then he can you I encourage all the brothers and sisters out there, please, go to your neighbor. Sh- just shake their hand and tell them you love them. That would mean more to anybody than you could ever imagine. You know, you see, you see a man walking down the road, and you know he needs a ride. Stop and pick him up. I know people don't like to pick people up anymore. It's, well, I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt or something. But if God's with you, God's not going to let that man hurt you. That's right. Or a woman. You know, on hot days, I see people walking. I stop and I pick them up. People say, well, I ain't got the gas, got the time. Take time out of your time and help somebody. That's what God wants us to do. But brothers and sisters, I took enough of your time. I'd like for Brother Tony to say a word or something. And I just want to let you know. And please do me a favor. Go over to your neighbor. You see somebody walking and shake them, hug their neck, and tell them to love them. Now, Brother Eddie knows me pretty good. Everywhere I go, I say, you having a good day. God loves you. Smile. I make them smile because you know why? I... I when they smiling, it just brightens my heart with love to see them smile. Even we went to McDonald's the other day to get some some hamburgers and some soft drinks, and uh, this girl she was real busy. I said, "Honey, can you smile?" She goes, "I'm smiling." I said, "No, give me a real smile." I said, "God loves you," and I told her about the Tim Revival we in. 
But, Amen. you know, just brothers and sisters, do me a favor. And I love you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Just go out, shake someone's hand, tell you me love her. God bless you. You have a blessed day, my friends. Amen. Amen. Here's Brother Tony. <laughs> Praise God. And the next one that's going to volunteer to speak about the Lord and maybe give a testimony would be Brother Tony from uh, Watchman Revolution Church. He is a deacon there. He just got a uh, just got uh, ordained ordained to that church. So everybody, please keep your ears and your heart. And be praying for Brother Tony. Amen. So Brother Tony, the mic is yours. Well, I really don't know what to say right now. But, uh, it's kind of been touched on. Uh, no, I can't see it. Brother Eddie said something. Uh, you know, make sure everything is right with between you and the Lord because you never know when your last breath is going to be. Twice in my life. According to the doctors, it would have been my last day. Uh, back in 2002, I had a massive stroke. I had no idea anything was going wrong wrong with me. I woke up that morning, it was just a normal day, and I was, my wife went to the grocery store, and I was waiting around, waiting around on her to come home, and I was help her carry the groceries in, and when she pulled up in the driveway, I walked out the back door, and the uh, first thing she said to me is, what's wrong with you? I said, well, there's nothing wrong, I feel fine. Just had a little minor headache, didn't didn't concern me one bit and I was as I was trying to carry the groceries in I fell down right there in the driveway and couldn't get up so she ended up having to call the ambulance they took me down to the hospital and uh, they said that I'd had a massive stroke by the time I got to the hospital my eyes was set and fixed and the doctors was down there and they they told my wife and all my friends and family that came down there that there was no hope I was not going to pull through. And my wife looked the doctor right in the eye and said, there's too many people praying for him. Thank you. So after, I don't know, uh, the stroke really messed my my mind up as far as I, I can't re really remember lengths of time very well I think it was two weeks in the hospital and then they sent me to a rehab hospital and in the rehab hospital it was very discouraging because the, all the rehab doctors were saying there's no way you're gonna get out of that wheelchair you're gonna be in that chair for the rest of your life and well, I'm out of the chair. I walk around. I, for right now, I have to use a cane. But uh, I believe God's going to heal me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We are the healed. Yeah. And then uh, another another time was uh, I believe it was uh, 2009 I just with, along with the stroke uh, one of the big problems with it for me was insomnia and I just couldn't sleep so I was up all night long trying to get a little bit of rest anyways and so I, I just wasn't feeling good and, uh, so I told my wife I said well well, that, that morning when she got up to take my daughter to school, and I told her, I said, whenever you get home, I think I need to go to the hospital. And, she's, and she told me, I said, well, you need to take a shower before you go. And the last thing I remember, I stepped into the shower, turned that water on, and apparently I just fell right out of the shower onto the bathroom floor. My heart had stopped, and uh, so she called again. She called the ambulance, and they come and they they get my heart going again. And the 
three minute drive to the hospital they said that my heart stopped four times in the ambulance and when they got me to the hospital they just couldn't keep it going and that's that's how close everybody is to Amen. eternity that's right. and you know with the heart attack I had no really I just didn't feel good that was I mean it wasn't anything to cause alarm I just it didn't feel good and then with the stroke twice doctors told told my family there's no way he's gonna walk out of here But, yes, yes. God's smarter than any of those doctors anyway. Amen, brother. Blessing but, Lord. Yeah, just like uh, in, uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, all... Just like what, what they told the king. My God is able to heal me. Whether he does or not, I'm still going to serve him. Amen. 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 Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Man. That, I guess that's all I've got to say right Amen. now. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Lord. Amen. Praise God. God. Praise Bless God. Bless Jesus. Praise God. You know, testimonies like that's what changed people's lives. Amen. Yeah. Somebody See, going through it, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, somebody out there will hear this testimony. It could be Courage. and today or it could be three months or it could be a year yeah. from now. But somebody's going to hear this and uh, knows that they're not alone. Praise God. That we got to stand up and proclaim the word of God wherever we go, whenever yeah. we're going through it. See, my friend, that's what the house of prayer here is for, is to pray for you that you know that you're not alone. Praise God. Come that on. that uh, we're not both to chase after evil things. We're both to be chasing after the good things of God. Amen. Amen. See, my friends, today, that's why we need to stand up and proclaim the word of God. If you're yeah. going to, if you want to see a great move of God today, amen, 7 o'clock, won't you go over to Willow Street? Up on that hill on that uh, what brother Eddie says that sixty dollar tent, yeah. and just feel the power of God flowing from the men and women of God. So my friends, my family, remember me in prayer. Remember Bishop Eddie Cheney in prayer. Let's remember brother Don and brother Tony as they go out there. They're fixing looks like they're fixing to leave Bishop along with me. Oh Lord, look oh, out! Oh, look out. Amen. Anyways, love you guys. Remember me in prayer. Praise God that Jesus is the truth, life, and the way. And only through him that you we ever see the kingdom of God. But we got to make ourselves ready, my friends, because the great day is coming. But is there a terrible day? That same day, my friend, yeah. the ones that are true with God will be with God. But the ones that are playing church is going to find a hell place to go. So, my friends, my family, remember me in prayer. Remember the bishop, remember all the body of Christ, but most of all, remember Jesus Christ that one died on that rugged cross for you and I, that we could live, amen. amen, that we could stand up and proclaim the word of God, no matter what devilish ways or people that come with their hearts, that we stand true with our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So, my friends, my family, peace be out. Love you guys. Oh